Hello all, welcome to R&D Labs with me Rohan and today is the start of a brand new series in which we're going to see how to implement maps in your software project. This tutorial is a series of tutorial that we'll be covering on how to implement Google Maps, Apple Maps and so on. So make sure that you're subscribed to the channel and hitting the notification button so that you're notified next time a video comes in. In this tutorial, we'll be seeing the basics of implementing Google Maps in your software project. So how do we do all this? Let's get started. For this tutorial, I have created a startup project in Swift using storyboards. As a topic for today's tutorial is implementing Google Maps in iOS using Swift, we will have to go to the Google console to enable our API for this project. So let's open the Google console. It should be right here. All right, so we have uh, to go to console.cloud.google.com. It's right here. And when you enter this, you will have to log in using your Google credential. After doing so, uh, all you've got to do is you'll have to first create a project and you will have to associate the Google Maps API to that project. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, click create project. It will open up this page in which you will have to enter your project name. So uh, I like to keep the project name similar to what we have in our Xcode project, which is uh, test Google Maps. So I will just name the project as it is. So let's say test Google Maps. And I will leave the location as default which is no organization and i will click create it will take a while all right so as you can see it just opened up your dashboard in which you can see your project name uh, the details of your project the apis and since i have already attached my billing information to the project so that is the reason why you can see that the uh, the billing section is also enabled if not then it will prompt you to attach or rather add your uh, card information your debit or credit card information for uh, the billing purposes all right so after we do this we will have to head back to the uh, apis section which is uh, to the left and if you just maximize this open up the APIs and services section and uh, over here you will have to select or rather search for Google Maps API so let's click enable APIs and services and search for Google Maps API it's taking a while here it is it's a maps sdk for ios so just select that and all you got to do is just uh, click enable All right, so after a while, it will show up the metrics section in which uh, you can see the statistics of your API calls. But anyhow, since we have not implemented this in the project, you'll not be able to see anything. But before the step, there is one more uh, uh, prompt that the console will send you. It is to enter your card information so that in case if the, um, the free limit is breached, then you know your card is chargeable uh, for any upward usage based on the plan that you'll be selecting so after you have set up the apis the next thing that you've got to do is we need to get the key to work right so where do you go for this you will have to open the credentials section and you will have to get the key for your project over here uh, you will have to go into credentials in apis and services and over there you need to enable your apis so you will have to go and uh, click create credentials so once you do that you will have to select api key and uh, a pop-up will be showing uh, to you uh, with the apis for the google maps and what all you got to do is just click copy but there is one more security feature over here is if you click the restrict key 
it will only allow you to utilize this key for Google Maps only. So if you say it is used for only iOS apps, so just select iOS apps. Or if you want to use this same key for any other purposes, you can go ahead and utilize that for a specific purpose or just click none if you want to use it for all the platforms. Secondly, there's something called as restrict key. Okay, so if you select this, this will be utilized only to implement Google Maps. So once you click that, you can select the APIs over here for which I will be selecting maps and I will select maps SDK for iOS and I will just select out and this is completely optional. Okay, so if you just uh, ignore and click OK in the previous API pop up, uh, you don't have to do anything as such. Okay, and uh, this key is very confidential. Do not share uh, with anyone after this tutorial, even I'll be deleting this key. So uh anyhow this will not be shared at all uh, and again it's not a mandatory step uh, you can just leave everything as it is and create your api key next you need to import your google maps sdk to your swift project so how do we do that you need to go to cocopods.org and search for google maps so let's go ahead and search that and we'll have to import the pod file into your project so let's go ahead and open the cocopods.org and search over here for google maps and uh, you have many of them but i just want this so i'll just bring that up right here okay so just select that and uh, you will have to get the pod command to import google maps into your project so where is it you need to scroll down and uh, you will have to search for port google maps which is right here so this is what we are going to utilize to import the port file to our project all right so let's copy this first of all you will have to run the port init command to initialize the port file for our project so let's go ahead and open the terminal and uh, let's go to our uh, project which is under documents just under R&D labs yeah and uh, our project is test Google Maps okay so over here uh, let's write pod in it all right so our pod file is created and uh, now let's go ahead and uh, write the pod command into our pod file right here so I will uh, so this is the one so I'll just copy this into this right so I have pasted this and I will run pod install to install the pod as you can see uh, the version for Google Maps is already there it is 4.1.0 and i have got a confirmation that things are all right the pod is installed into our project so now uh, once the pod is installed you will have to open the xc workspace file uh, to open up your project so this project over here uh, which you are seeing this was opened up using the xcode proj uh, project type file and you'll have to first close this and you'll have to open up the xc workspace file which is right here so this is the XE workspace file and this is the Xcode project file. This was the one which is, uh, which is normally used to open up. But once you have the CocoaPod imported, you will have to use the XE workspace file to open up your project. So once you click that, the, the project will open up. And the first thing that you're going to do is you will have to import uh, Google Maps class into it. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's say import. Uh, Google Maps and over here uh, in the application did finish launching with options method you will have to add the API key that we had generated from the console so you will have to write one line of code over here so let's make some room and you will have to use GMS services dot provide API key and within the uh, string parameter, you will have to give the API key that we had generated uh, in the console. So let's open up our console. 
and we'll have to copy the API key that is generated here. So let's copy this and let's paste it here and save it. So after we have done this, let's go ahead and open up our main.storyboard and there you will have to add in a view to have our Google Maps displayed on it. So let's go ahead and search for UI view and let's place it on our view controller just stretch it across the area of our view controller and put in some constraints to it so that it sticks on that so let's click and four constraints after this uh, you will have to first change the class to which the ui view belongs to okay so uh, after this let's go and uh, change the class which is gms map view and then uh, let us open up our assistant editor to add the outlet for the ui view that we have created okay so let's uh, control drag this to our view controller class and let's name this as my map and as you can see the type is already changed to gms map view so let's go ahead and click connect you can see that an error will come and this is reason uh, because we have not reference the google maps class within our view controller class so let's go ahead and write import uh, google maps into our view controller class and leave it right there next what we are going to do is we'll have to declare a location manager variable okay so we will have to have that within our class so let's go ahead and do that so let's say let location manager is equal to cn location manager all right and what you are going to do next is we are going to conform the view controller class to cl location manager delegate so let's go ahead and add that too so let's write cl location manager delegate all right what we're going to do next is uh, if you go down to our view did load method over here we will have to set the delegate of the location manager to self location manager dot delegate is equal to self next after we do this we are going to see if the location services are enabled and if the user has granted permissions for the location manager to collect the coordinates from where he's using the mobile application okay so let's write if uh, cl location manager dot location services enabled okay which will return either yes or no or true or false and over here what you're going to do is location manager sorry no location manager dot request location so here it will return the coordinates uh, for the user what if the what if the location services are not enabled so let's write an else block as well let's write else make some room there and we will have to write location manager dot request uh, when in use authorization okay so we will have to write two settings within the info.p list uh, file uh, which we will be doing it right away so let's go ahead and open up our info.p list file within our project the reason why we are doing this is if the uh, app is actually uh, working for the first time on the user's phone so there will be a prompt on the user's phone to approve your request to gather the user's coordinates to gather the user's uh, location metadata and uh, for to process within your app okay so for this reason uh, there are two settings that we need to add in the info.plist file which we'll be doing it right now so let's go ahead and open up the info.plist file within your project so let's go ahead and add that so add row and let's write privacy let's write privacy oh it doesn't filter so let's uh, scroll down and over here you will see privacy 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 location always and when in use a description so let's go ahead and add a text which will say um, you can give in any text over here uh, let's say test google 
maps needs your coordinate to show on the map all right so let's leave that over there uh, in the previous versions of Xcode, you had two settings, which is privacy, location, always uh, usage, description, and uh, privacy, location, always when in use, description. Okay, so I, uh, I don't know in this uh, version of Xcode, I'm just seeing only one setting. So I'll just give that a try. And uh, let's go back to our view controller and we'll see whether that works or not. So when will that get fired? It will get fired over here. Okay, so you need uh, some kind of a delegate stub for this to handle, right? So let's go ahead and uh, do that. So let's write function and let's write location manager. Location manager uh, dot did change authorization. This is a one. And over here, uh, I rather would prefer to write a switch block then there are different um, authorization steps or different authorization levels that the app uh, passes through so let's write them one by one uh, and write switch sorry switch and over here we will have to write manager dot uh, authorization status okay and over here uh, in all the cases the first case that we are going to do is uh, authorized always and just write return over there which means it's a positive uh, case you don't have to do anything on that uh, next case is authorized always authorized when in use sorry authorized when in use and which is again we will have to write in return and the next is uh, denied okay so the user has gone into the settings and has denied uh, denied the permissions to uh, to get the coordinates uh, for the user and you will have to manually enable the settings within the settings app on your iOS device okay so let's go and add few more cases as well uh, let's write dot restricted so in this case what you're going to do is you will have to kind of re uh, submit your uh, your request to the user and I will have to write in location manager dot uh, request uh, when in use authorization so the same uh, line of code you will have to write in again I'll just keep that in my clipboard and I will paste it here okay and uh, there is one more case which is called case dot not determined okay and you will have to again send in the same uh, request back to the user and by default uh, just request uh, to the user okay so this is the the block that you can write for better uh, user experience and the app experience as well okay so if the permission is not granted by the user to capture uh, the location then it will always fall back upon uh, these lines of code to rather request the user again okay next what we're going to do is we will have to capture the user coordinates right so for that you will have to write a uh, function uh, location manager uh, dot did update uh, location this is a one and in this block what we're going to do is we are going to capture the uh, user's coordinate and we are going to show it on a map and on the map you can find a marker for the current user's location okay so this is what we are going to uh, do in this uh, method so let's write uh, my map dot camera is equal to gms camera position and over here there are multiple uh, overloaded methods okay so the one that we are going to select is target zoom bearing and viewing angle so let's go ahead and have that over here what we're going to do is in the target parameter we have to pass in the location coordinate so let's write cl location coordinate 2d uh, and uh, we will have to pass in the latitude for that right so let's write location manager sorry location manager dot location dot coordinate 
dot latitude okay and the same thing that we are going to do is we are going to pass in the longitude within the longitude parameter of course we will have to add in the uh, the default value to that uh, that is the reason why we are seeing the error uh, that might come up now so let's pass in the optional as well to this Okay, and what we're going to do now is we are going to set the zoom to uh, rather eight or nine and the bearing is zero and which is right here and the viewing angle is also zero. Okay, so you have set the target, you have set the zoom, you have set the bearing and you have set the viewing angle as well okay so this is one and you have set the zoom as well you have set the bearing as well so right here and you have set the viewing angle so these are the four parameters which is already filled next what we're going to do is we have to set the marker as well right so let's add in few more lines of code and we are done Okay, let's write marker is equal to gms marker okay and let's write marker position is equal to cl location coordinate 2d and we will have to pass in the latitude and longitude to that and uh, we have already done that in the previous lines of code so let's copy that and uh, let's paste it over here uh, I think it will require the optional value as well and for longitude oh, this should be longitude right yeah and for the longitude let's copy this and paste it over here I think it is okay and uh, let's go and say marker dot title is equal to what do we say hey hi and we have one more property for the marker so let's say marker dot snippet is equal to uh, hello i'm here i don't need hello because i have already written hey hi and over here what we're going to do is we need to assign the marker to the map right so let's write marker dot map is equal to my map okay so this will get set on our map that we have declared in the uh, in the previous lines and uh, there's one more uh, function that we need to always uh, remember to uh, write and this is for the location manager if it fails okay so let's write function uh, location manager did fail with error mm. Yeah, this is one okay and let's say print error okay and let's build it and see if we have any errors and we are good to go next up uh, what we're going to do is I have connected my physical iOS device so let's run the app within my iPhone and see how it works so let's give it a good run and I hope I don't face any errors All right, so uh, as you can see, the app has not loaded. So what we will do is uh, we will have to go back to our console and see what errors are shown. It says uh, it says ls location when in use usage description is not found. So what we have done is we have actually uh, added only one privacy settings, which is location always and when in use description. But this also requires ns location when in use usage description so as i told you this is the first time that i am using a a, a clubbed version of uh, both the previous settings so let me go and add one more which is uh, 
privacy uh, location pen in use usage description and I will copy the one that I have written for the previous location privacy setting all right so let me just save this and run it again and I hope the app opens up with a prompt as you can see the prompt is shown which says allow always allow while using the app and don't allow so I'll just select allow while using the app and let's see where it takes me there you go so it is actually pointing out to my current location the zoom gesture is also enabled and you can scroll the, the map as well so what all did we do uh, it's a quick recap first we had gone into our google console we have set up the apis uh, for the google maps we have then copied the api key which is set up for the google maps and we have added this within our app delegate all right and before this we had implemented or rather we had imported the pod file for google maps into our project and that is where the uh, the entire process kick started after doing that the first thing that we did is we had uh, brought in our ui view and we had changed the type of ui view to gms map view and we have added the camera and the marker settings to it and don't forget to add in these tabs for the location manager delegate which will actually behave the way the app is actually authorized to run on the uh, user's phone so there are different levels of authorization that have been granted for the app to capture the location so which are uh, authorized always authorized when in use denied restricted uh, and not, not determined okay so in these conditions you can again request but if it is denied you will have to go back into the settings manually and approve the app uh, at least once okay then only the and the location will be captured and i think uh, it is fairly simple to implement google maps within the ios platform So as you can see, it is quite simple to implement Google Maps in your search project if you follow the steps correctly, as I mentioned in the tutorial. If you have any doubts, please reach me out in the comment section. I'll be happy to help as always. And please, please, please like and subscribe to the channel. And see you until next time. Cheers.